We're now going to discuss the Arrhenius equation, which helps us tie together a lot of different factors that affect the rate of a reaction. The Arrhenius equation helps us determine what the rate constant in a rate law is going to be, and that's going to depend on these factors, something called the pre-exponential factor, times that number E again, raised to the power of the negative activation energy of the reaction, divided by the gas constant, and also divided by the temperature. We're going to look at each of these in turn. K, once again, is the rate constant. So, of course, as K increases, the rate is going to increase. A is what's known as the pre-exponential factor, and this has to do with how easy it is for molecules to come together and collide in a way that's going to allow the reaction to occur. E sub A is the activation energy for the reaction. Now the activation energy for the reaction is the energy required to get the reaction going. And we can think about the activation energy in the following way. Let's suppose that we can look at the energy of a reaction. So energy is going to increase here on the y-axis like this. And we're going to look at the energy of the reaction as it proceeds. And perhaps this reaction happens to be exothermic. So it's going to, if we write that this is the reactants over here and the products over here, we see as we move this way on the x-axis, we move from reactants to products. And we're seeing that the reactants are higher in energy than the products. And so this is going to give off energy as it goes. Now, in many cases, there's an energy barrier that the reactants must surmount in order to proceed and go to products. And this energy barrier that the reactants must surmount, this distance, so to speak, on the y-axis, this amount of energy, this is called the activation energy, um, designated by E subscript A for the reaction. R, in this case, is the gas constant. But here, we're going to use the physics gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. And T, we're going to use as temperature. And of course, we're going to use Kelvin temperature units when we're dealing with the activation energy. Now, as we do with many things uh, in our study of kinetics, we can linearize this equation. And if we linearize this equation, we take the natural log of both sides of the equation. So we're going to take the natural log of the rate constant over here. And that's going to be equal to the natural log of everything on this side. Like that. We're going to expand this a little bit using our knowledge that the natural log of the product of something A times B is going to be equal to the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. So we're going to separate this in the parentheses here. We're going to separate this as B, everything that's in the exponent, and A is another. So using this law of logs, I can say the natural log of the rate constant is going to be equal to the natural log of the pre-exponential factor plus the natural log of e to the negative e sub a over rt. You might recall that these are inverse functions, log and e to the power of. And because of that, they'll cancel. And I can write the natural log of the rate constant is the natural log of the pre-exponential factor minus e sub a the activation energy over RT. And this is a linearized form of the Arrhenius equation. And it works like this. What we'll say is we're going to let the natural log of the rate constant, we're going to let that be Y. We're going to let the natural log of A, this is going to be the Y intercept or B. We're going to let negative e sub a 
over r, that's going to be the slope. So this is going to become the slope. That part there. And 1 divided by the temperature. That's going to be x. And there we see we have a linearized form of the Arrhenius equation is the natural log of the rate constant is the natural log of the exponential of the pre-exponential factor minus the activation energy over RT. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to measure the rate constant K for a reaction at a variety of temperatures. And if we do that, we can then plot the natural log of all those rate constants versus one divided by the temperature. Now that may look a little funny, but we got to remember that that is what our X is defined as. And if we plot points for this, what we're going to end up seeing is we're going to see a straight line of points if the Arrhenius law is followed. And the slope of this line, there it is, this is what it is. The slope of this line is going to be the opposite of the activation energy over the gas constant. Again, we're going to remember we use the physics gas constant here. And an interesting thing then is that this type of analysis called an Arrhenius analysis allows us to find the activation energy for a reaction. Because you see, if I multiply both sides of this equation by R, I see that if I take the gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, and multiply it by the slope of this line, I'll get the opposite of the activation energy for the reaction. It's a way to find the activation energy for chemical reactions. It's a very useful linearized equation. And we're going to show you how to do this in a, uh, with, some, with some actual data. Okay, we're now going to put this graphical analysis to work, the Arrhenius equation, where we recognize the linearized form is the natural log of the rate constant, is the natural log of our pre-exponential factor, minus the activation energy over the gas constant, and also over temperature. And we have some data here, some kinetic data, for this particular chemical reaction. We have our temperatures in units of kelvins, and we have our rate constants in units of uh, molarity per second. Now, in order to analyze these linearly, we're going to have to convert the rate constants into the natural log of the rate constants. And you might recall, we're going to need to convert the temperature to 1 divided by the temperature because the graph that we want to ultimately make is the natural log of the rate constant over, excuse me, uh, graphed versus one divided by the temperature. We should get a straight line and the slope of that line will give us the activation energy. Of course, if we take the gas constant times the, times the slope. So we're going to need to know these values in 1 divided by the temperature. Of course, the units here will be inverse Kelvin. And we also need to know the natural log of our various rate constants. So this is simple enough to do on a calculator. Our temperatures, 1 over temperatures, I should say, 1 divided by 357.0027. Eight, one divided by 400, 0 0.025, one divided by 458, 0 0.00218, one divided by 524, 0 0.00191, 1 divided by 533, 0 0.00188, 
And then finally, 1 divided by 615, 0 0.00163. Now we'll find the natural log of all of these various rate constants. 1.72, what's the natural log of that? 0 0.542. 2.53, what's the natural log of that? 0 0.928. 3.82, natural log of that is 1.34. 5.2, natural log of that, 1.65, 5.61, natural log of that, 1.72, and then finally 7.65, natural log of that is 2.03. So now we're going to have to correct, uh, excuse me, now we're going to have to graph these values. So we're going to be graphing 1 divided by the temperature on the x-axis and the natural log of all of these on the x-axis. Let's set up our graph. All right, I've got my graph set up with the axes labeled, natural log of the rate constant on this axis. 1 divided by the temperature on this axis. These are my 1 over temperatures. These are my natural log of the rate constant. Just see them there. OK. So let's take our first point, 1 over T at point 0.0028, which is right here. And the natural log, corresponding natural log is 0.542. That's 0.7. So it's just going to be a little ways up. We'll put our first point here. Check that one off. The next one over temperature is 0 0.0025. So that's 0 0.0026. It's going to be right in the middle here, 0 0.0025. And we got to take that one at 0 0.928. Here's 0 0.9. This would be 1.3. So that's 1.1. One, one. I'll just be a little higher than 0 0.9. So there's our second one. The next one is 0 0.00218. So let's see, 0 0.002. It's close to 0 0.0022, which would be right here. It'll be a little lower than this. And the corresponding natural log of K is 1.34. It's 1.34, 1.35. Just be a little higher than this right here and a little lower. So I'm going to just pop that one right there. Looks like we're getting a line. Yeah? All right, let's try the next one. 0 0.00191. So this is 0 0.00. 1.8, this is 0 0.002, 0 0.0019 will be right in the middle, a little higher because it's 0 0.0191. And then we got to go to 1.65. So let's see, if this is 1.5, that's 1.7. 1.65 will be just a little higher than halfway between these two points. So let me just pop it right there. All right, that one's done. And then uh, what do we got? 0 0.00188. Here's 0 0.0018. Oh, that's really close. The, the, these points are really close. I'm just not going to worry about this one right here because this is going to be very close to that point. Let's do our last one, 0 0.00163, 0 0.0018, 0 0.0016. will be a little higher on the x-axis than the here. we got to go all the way up to 2.0, 1.7, 1.9. 2.0 will be right about in the middle. So this point will be really close to the y-intercept. Look at that. It looks like we got a straight line, which we should for the Arrhenius plot. I'm going to draw my best line that I can through these points. Here we are. Like that. And now if we find the slope of this line and we multiply that by the physics gas constant, we should get our activation energy. Of course, we'll take the negative of it because the slope's going to be negative. Well, I can choose any two points along this line to do this on. So I suppose I'll, I'll just take two of my experimental points. I might as well have done this from the beginning. But let's take this point here and this point here, and we'll find the slope between these two points. So the slope, we'll remember, is going to be equal to the rise 
of our graph divided by the run. The rise is how far up we go. So the rise is going to be, let's see, if we're taking this point here, we're going to take 2.03. That's this minus this initial point, which would be 0 0.542. And we'll divide that by the run, which is the distance in this direction. So it's going to be 0 0.00163 minus almost, yep, 0 0.0028. That's our rise over our run. What does that come out to? Well, let's find out. The numerator, 2.03 minus 0 0.542, 1.488, and we're going to divide that by 0 0.00168 minus 0 0.0028. That's a negative 0 0.00112. Now, there's some units that are going to be associated with this run. Those are going to be units of Kelvin to the minus 1. We need to remember that. So our slope is going to have units of unitless over inverse Kelvin, which is Kelvin. We're going to want to keep track of that. But anyway, our slope is going to be 1.488 divided by 0.00112. 1,329 rounding up Kelvin. It's negative. It's a negative slope. Now, if we take this slope and multiply it by the physics gas constant, 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin, that's going to give us the activation energy. We're almost home free. So I take this value here, which is ultimately negative. I'm going to take the opposite of it because we're going to remember we, we take the opposite of it. So we're going to multiply this by 8.314. And we get 11,000, basically, joules per mole, which if we convert it is 11 kilojoules per mole for the activation energy for this particular reaction.